Okay, today I'm going to show you one of the simplest bookbinding techniques and it uh, allows you to make some nice little notebooks where the uh, sheets and the cover are folded over. Like that one. Um, this size is particularly handy because it fits right in your, in your pocket. The first thing you're going to want is your paper. I'm using blank paper today, but you could use lined paper or graph paper. Um, there's all sorts of dot grid paper and all sorts of different types of paper that you can uh, either print out or purchase and use for this. It's a little bit easier if you just use a standard 8.5 by 11 letter sheet of paper for right now. You're also going to need something that you can use as a cover. So it could be uh, cardboard like from a cereal box or this is a, a microwave meal that we can use as a cover. Now obviously you may not like what's on this cover. So after you, you create your crease and fold, you can glue some sort of attractive paper onto the outside. You do want to do it after you fold it though, or else you'll risk that paper on the outside splitting, which doesn't look as good. But uh, these are, you know, free. You can find cardboard like that anywhere and it makes a great cover. Uh, you can buy specialty cardstock or just any cardstock. You can buy plain cardstock and then run it through your printer, print a design on it. Uh, these are a bunch of different colors and things of some specialty cardstock that we got for a project. Uh, one thing that I like to use is these uh, plastic folders, you know, that you can get at like Walmart or the Dollar Tree for dirt cheap. Um, very handy, especially if they already have a crease somewhere. Um, but these are, are thin, but very tough, and pretty much indestructible. And this is one I've been carrying in my wallet for a good couple months now. And you can see the, other than it being a little warped, the cover itself is just fine. The other thing that you're going to need is some sort of thread. I'm using, uh, this is embroidery floss. It does pretty well for little books like this. Uh, if you get into much more complicated, then you want something that's waxed and that keeps the thread from tying itself into knots as you're sewing with it. But uh, embroidered floss works really well because it's, it's fat so that it's less likely to rip the paper. And uh, it comes in a ton of different colors so you can do all sorts of fun stuff. Some tools that you're going to need. You're going to want some way to cut your paper and your cover stock. Um, you can get by with scissors. Um, you can also use a ruler and a razor blade, you know, like a razor knife, utility knife. Uh, I use that quite a bit. I don't use scissors very often for this. Of course, the best ways to do it would be with a, a paper cutter, like a big paper cutter. You can get uh, either the rotary paper cutters or the big guillotine style paper cutters are pretty affordable these days. You're going to need something to poke paper with because you've got to punch holes in the paper. So this is your standard push pin, which you can get by with. It, it will work in a pinch. It's nicer to have an actual awl, a paper awl, crafting awl. And uh, if you get an awl for crafting with paper, then you want one that's pretty thin down at the, uh, down at the tip. They make some for like leather working and stuff that are much thicker and that'll put too big of a hole. But uh, so for today, to keep this simple, I'm going to be using a push pin. The next thing you're going to want will be a needle. This is just an embroidery needle that uh, I think came in a kit with some of the floss. So it's very handy. It's a good idea to, to blunt the tip down a little bit just so you're not sticking yourself and it's less likely to split your thread as you sew back through. Final thing we want is some sort of a work surface to protect our table or whatever we're using it on. You know, if you're just on a workbench, it's not that big of a deal, but it is handy to have something so that when you poke through the paper with your push pin or your awl, that you have something so that it can go in and stick without um, you know, blunting your tip all the time because this is a piece that you want to be sharp tipped as opposed to the needle because with this you were going to be punching through uh, 
layers and layers of paper and the outside cover as well. So uh, this is just a stack of cardboard. I just did a quick glue up to glue them together so that I had plenty of room without ever reaching the table. So you could use, uh, you know, foam from packing, you know, some sort of electronic equipment usually comes in foam packing, uh, different things like that. And so sheets of, of some sort of high density foam would be nice, but cardboard is cheap, free and easy. Okay, the first thing that we want to do is we want to take six pieces of paper and we want to get it cut exactly in half so that when we put them together, we end up with 12 half sheets of paper. And then we want to cut our cover stock um, basically the same. It's, it, you can come back later and trim these things down so, it, it, you know, don't kill yourself trying to do that. But uh, it does help if, if you can get it as close as possible at first. You can see on this one maybe that I'm just a little bit off on half of the cut. I was about half a millimeter off on my, on my cut in half. So once again, that's a little easier on a paper cutter than trying to use scissors or something like that. But um, you can do it. Just practice. And uh, like I said, you can always come back later with a ruler and an X-Acto knife and trim these edges up a lot more true. So once we have 12 half sheets and our cover stock, uh, one of the things we want to do is fold our cover stock. And thick things like this don't like to fold very well. So a good idea is to score it right in the middle. Now, in this case, to make these little notebooks, you can see if I just lay that on there and, and then flip it over, you can see we have lots of extra. So all we need to really do is make our score line somewhere in the center-ish because we're going to trim off the excess later. So I'm using the grid here on the mat, but you can eyeball it pretty easy. Now the way that I'm going to score this is I'm going to use something that's not sharp. Now this could be uh, the back of a butter knife. I'm going to use the rounded portion of this ruler and I'm just going to, to lay one ruler down. It doesn't have to be metal, but lay something down that's straight and just firmly, but you know, I'm not trying to cut it. Give it a few scores. Now you can see after folding, that allows the, the spine of this book to fold without splitting out. And I scored it on this side and then folded it around the score mark, right? So I scored it on this side and then folded it so that the compressed part is in the inside. And it gives me a nice crisp line on the back side there. And I've noticed for some reason that lighter colors of construction paper tend to split easier. Don't know why that is, but that's just part of the, the deal. Okay, so I've got my cover folded. Now I'm going to fold my paper. And it's a really good idea not to try to fold all of this at once. You can certainly do that and it will work. But uh, it's harder to keep things lined up and to get a good crisp fold. So I'll take two or three sheets at a time and fold it that way. And it's also handy if you don't have good strong nails to use something like, a, you know, that you can use the shaft of a screwdriver. Um, in paper crafting, we use specific things called bone folders for folding paper and compressing it like this but I wanted to do this video as much as I could with just things that you might have laying around the house. So uh, the shaft of a screwdriver, anything basically hard and, and smooth that you can run across that crease. Okay, now that I have them all folded, I just put them together in a bundle. Um, this is what we would call a signature, or might call a signature in book binding. I'm gonna take that signature and just put it into my cover just like it kind of would be with the book. You'll notice that things don't line up exactly. That's because um, no two manufacturers of paper 
actually measure eight and a half by 11 the same. I'm just gonna line up one edge because that'll make my life a little bit easier. Make sure all the paper is snug down in there. And then I'm gonna open it up to the center. I'm gonna grab my work surface that I can poke into and my poker. Like I said, I'm just gonna hold this so that it's lined up. Now you can go through and measure all of this stuff out, but when it comes right down to it in the end, it's not nearly as important on this kind of a stitch as you might think. So I'm just gonna eyeball it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in about half an inch or so, and I'm gonna poke down into that crease and all the way through into my cardboard work surface. And hopefully you can see now that there's now a little hole right there coming out the outside. So I'm just gonna wiggle that around a little bit because I do want that hole pretty good size. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it around and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Just come in about that same amount. It's not critical that it be exact for this kind of binding. So push that in. Since the push pin is a little small, I'm gonna wiggle it around a little bit in there. So now I have a hole on either end. I'm gonna try to go right to the center and push a hole through there. Once again, not critical, just get it close. So now I've got three holes. Now what I wanna do is create a hole that's uh, in between those two. So I'll end up with five total holes. It's a little harder with this little push pin than it would be with an awl. So that's why we typically use awls. But most of us have a push pin lying around the house. So. All right, now we're done with the push pin. We can Put that away, and we'll just set this to our side as we get our thread ready. Now I'm using uh, yellow thread to make this really easy for you guys to see. And what I want is about three times the length of my stitch. So there's one, there's two, and there's three. And this is just so I have plenty to tie off on the ends. And then I'm going to thread my needle. And a, a trick that I learned when I was young, my mother was a seamstress, uh, is to take your, your thread and pinch it between the pads of your finger. And then, just so you could barely see it, and then take your needle and you can slide it through and your thread should slide right on. It may take you a couple times if you're not used to it, but that pinching motion keeps the thread all together. So it's very handy. Okay. Now we'll get to the actual sewing, which is really pretty easy. And the, the knot is there only to keep it from accidentally pulling through. We're not actually going to use that for the binding of the book, you'll see. So I start from the inside in the middle hole and I leave myself about a two inch tail and then I go out and then to the next hole and back in. And sometimes with that little hole, it can be hard to get through. There we go. And this is called the saddle stitch. And it's important, don't pull hard away from the book. Pull in the line of the stitching. See how I pull out this way? That way you don't rip the paper, much less likely. So, and then I come to the next hole and I pull it taut. And then I'm gonna come back to this hole. And ideally, you wanna try to not split your thread, but that's pretty hard for this kind of stuff. Uh, that's one of the reasons why it's a good idea to use a blunt needle it's less likely to split the thread. And I'm just gonna make sure that's tight. And then I'm gonna come through the middle hole again and go out.
now I don't have to control that center thread anymore. So from the outside, I'll just be going back in. And I need more of my tail here. Okay, so now I've gone all the way around and we're coming to the point where we're going to tie off. What I want to do is I want to take my needle and I want to come under this, this farthest, farther stitch, come under that, and then go under the stitch that I just made. And this gives me a, a nice tight point there. And then I'm going to tie off. So I just want to loop around that, gives it something to kind of anchor that, and then just give it a double knot. And then leave yourself maybe a quarter of an inch or so of excess. And there you go, you've got your basic book. Now you can use it just like this, or you can take it to the next level and get like a utility knife and a metal ruler. You want metal because a plastic ruler, the utility knife will cut into it. Uh, you could use a rotary knife as well, like a rotary cutter, and then just run it over multiple times. But in this case, um, the dimensions of these little pocket notebooks, made most famous probably by field notes, these are five and a half, roughly five and a half long, by three and a half wide. Okay, if you want to trim your book to size, uh, I can recommend a utility knife like this. These blades tend to be a bit sharper than the uh, like carpet utility knives. So, uh, plus you can always snap off and get a new tip if you need to. So, the important thing to remember when you are uh, cutting a book like this is you want to go with shallow passes, lots of shallow passes. And I'm just going to try to get it lined up as good as I can here without any half inch marks. That should be pretty good. So I'm just going to hold it down good and strong with my left hand. And then I'm just going to do, like I said, shallow passes. I'll move the cut pages out of the way as I go. I didn't quite get through it up the top there. But the more pressure you put, the more off your cut will be. Hopefully you can see there that that gives me a, a really a pretty good edge. I was a little bit off down here, but it's much better than what it was before. And I could probably trim that up a little bit. Uh, another thing that you can do is um, if, you, if you clamp it good and tight, you can take sandpaper and sand your edge smooth too. So that's another option. I'm just going to go ahead and trim off this little extra bit. Tamp it down to that side so I have a nice clean edge there, and then I'll trim off a little bit here. Now I know from experience that I can't go right up to the edge of my cover and try to cut off the white paper. It'll uh, end up with a funky cut, so I need to trim off a little bit of my actual cover as well. Turn it a little bit here so I can do that.
there you go. Now I've got a, a good little notebook slip right in my pocket. If you want to do something with these corners, um, the easiest way without spending any extra money is just to take a ruler and just to clip it off at a 45 degree angle, like so. And that'll give you a corner that won't wear quite as fast as a straight 90 degree corner. Or of course, you can buy a corner rounding punch. Um, if you get the handheld ones, only do one, maybe two pages at a time. Uh, I invested the money because I, I like to make these, so I invested in a big um, bench mount one that I can go through like 50 sheets of paper and uh, gives me good round corners. So there you go. These make great uh, gifts. Uh, I like to carry them, so I always have a little pocketbook with me anytime, so I take notes, do little drawings and things. I'm always making something, and so I always come up with some sort of idea or plan and uh, need some place to jot it down. So that's why I carry one with me all the time. But uh, yeah, you could you know, print out like photos of the kids or something and do that on your cover with some cover stock. Um, you know, you can go down to one of the printing companies like Staples or something and have them print it for you on really good card stock. And they can probably even cut your paper directly in half too. So that's kind of a, a handy thing to have if you don't have a, a big paper cutter or uh, even better as a stack cutter. Join us soon for the next bookbinding video where we will be learning the Coptic Stitch bookbinding method. Have a great day.